Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for watching TCM. We have reached the last Wednesday night in April, making it the final night in our month-long lineup of movies about addiction and recovery. Up next from 1967, based on Jacqueline Suzanne's deliciously scandalous bestseller, Valley of the Dolls. It's the story of three young women whose lives intersect as they try to make it in show business. There's Anne, played by Barbara Parkins, who's arrived in New York to work for a theatrical law firm. Neely, played by Patty Duke, a volatile, self-destructive Broadway performer. And then Sharon Tate as Jennifer, an ingenue generating more interest from her appearance than her talent. Technically, the dolls of the title does not refer to the women. It's slang for the pills, uppers and downers that tragically affect their lives. In 1966, the year before the movie, Suzanne's novel, also called Valley of the Dolls, became the hottest nonfiction book of the year, selling better than 30 million copies. It remains one of the best-selling books in publishing history. Jacqueline Suzanne based it on her own experiences trying to succeed in showbiz. When the book became a cultural sensation, Suzanne finally achieved the celebrity status that had eluded her as an actress. Though critics hated the film adaptation, audiences didn't care one bit, and the movie became one of the top ten moneymakers at the box office in 1967. It's something of a hybrid movie, though not really intentionally. It rather boldly broached previously taboo Hollywood topics like drugs and sexual orientation, yet Valley of the Dolls retains some of the opulence and studio craftsmanship specific to the 1950s genre of films known as women's pictures. Since its release 55 years ago, Valley of the Dolls has attained camp classic status thanks to its over-the-top tone and trashy plot points. Some behind-the-scenes drama has fueled the film's mystique. The actress originally cast as Helen Lawson, a worn-down and jaded singer, was Judy Garland, who had last appeared on screen in 1963's I Could Go On Singing. She wanted Valley of the Dolls to be her big comeback, but Garland, who had long battled her addictions, proved unreliable, locking herself in her trailer all day. Producers eventually let Judy Garland go, replaced her with Susan Hayward. From Fox in 1967, also with the great Lee Grant, directed by Mark Robeson, responsible for another soapy melodrama released a decade earlier, Peyton Place, this is Valley of the Dolls. The woman who wrote the novel Valley of the Dolls, Jacqueline Suzanne, hated the film version of her book, but it made enough money that Fox planned on producing a sequel. Suzanne even named it Beyond Valley of the Dolls. But the movie wasn't made immediately, and when Fox finally started production, the director was Russ Meyer, infamous for making nudie cutie pictures featuring busty women. Meyer, working with screenwriter Roger Ebert, yes, that Roger Ebert, massively amped up the trash factor in Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, which became a sensationalized parody of the original. Today, both films are really considered cult classics. Valley of the Dolls spawned a 1981 made-for-TV remake and a 1994 syndicated television soap opera. Suzanne's own life inspired a couple of films. Scandalous Me, the Jacqueline Suzanne story, a 1998 made-for-TV movie starring Michelle Lee with Valley of the Dolls star Barbara Parkins playing her agent. Suzanne also inspired Isn't She Great? That was from 2000, a campy comedy starring Bette Midler and Nathan Lane. Suzanne, who died of cancer in 1974 at just 56, led an interesting life, one well worth knowing. In his review of Isn't She Great? Roger Ebert, back to being a critic, wrote, Jacqueline Suzanne deserved better. Ahead tonight, James Kahn is a college professor and a gambling addict. Stick around for The Gambler, next on TCM.